you for joining us on this Thursday. I'm Journey Taylor. One day left before we can officially wrap up the work week. But as you can see behind me, Mother Nature already trying to put a damper on our weekend plans we may have. Nathan, some pretty hard storms rolling through parts of the area this morning. What are we looking at now? Good afternoon, Journey. That was a gusty gully washer that made its way right through the heart of Little Rock. Look at the rainfall totals estimates from Doppler radar. Solid area of three to four, maybe as much as five inches for the bullseye is right there into southern parts of Pope County. But even here in the metro, we saw rainfall totals two to three inches well over an inch of rain at Little Rock Airport. Things are quieting down across a large part of central Arkansas. Still, we have that coverage of showers and storms primarily north and east of Little Rock, and that will be the case going throughout the rest of the day. Thunder and lightning still mixed in at times. If you're watching us from Stuttgart and also over towards Monroe County, that cell is making its way off to the east. And look at the temperature difference where the sun is starting to break out through that cloud cover. Temperatures have shot up into the 70s in southwest Arkansas, but a large part of us are into the 50s. I think we'll see a little bit of sun as we go into the afternoon hours, primarily to the west and south of Little Rock. So it'll be in the 50s in northeast Arkansas, but 70s, maybe 80s in southwest Arkansas. Then our attention turns to Friday because we do have a two out of five risk or a slight risk of severe weather going throughout the day on Friday from Little Rock and off to the west. I'll have more details on not only that severe weather potential, but even as we go into the weekend coming up. Nathan, thank you. Well, tenants in Hot Springs on the verge of being without a place to call home will soon get the help they need to ease their burdens. Residents at Greenbrier Apartments reached out to us last year complaining about being forced to either pay for AC units or risk having them removed. Due to management issues, HUD is planning to take control of that complex. And during a meeting, the city shared options available to, for people to keep people off of the streets. I will be satisfied when the entire city has clean, safe, decent, sanitary housing. Those who once lived there can apply for Section 8 vouchers in response to poor housing conditions. Residents are suing the property owner for a breach of contract and discrimination. Making way through the state legislature are two bills that could silence complaints about a noisy neighbor. Inside those two bills are revised regulations to crypto mining, spanning from foreign investment restrictions to allowing cities to have a say in the regulating process. After receiving the stamp of approval from the Senate, both pieces of legislation could be taken up by the Arkansas House as early as today. This afternoon, the man you're seeing here on your screen is behind bars for a shooting investigation in Jacksonville. Police arresting Wayne Lee Jr. after officials say two people were shot near Galloway Park. And unfortunately, one resident says this is the type of activity that has become more common in the area. Over the years, I've been drive-bys. Like I said, there's been um, constant um, shootings you know, fights, things like that, that have always taken place the, over the past couple of years. Lee now sits in the Pulaski County Jail. As for those injured, they remain hospitalized where we await new details on their condition. Happening last night, our team received word that this man is back in police custody days after escaping for the Cleveland County Jail. Jared West has been on the run since Friday, but was eventually caught. This woman, Clarissa Stair, was also arrested for helping West. She's being held on a $75,000 bond. Former President Donald Trump went before justices on the Supreme Court, hoping to plead his case for the complete immunity in his criminal trials. Skylar Henry has the details on those arguments being heard today. Protesters gathered outside the Supreme Court Thursday, where justices heard arguments about whether former President Donald Trump should be free from criminal prosecution, a claim he reiterated at a campaign stop in New York. Uh, we have a big case today in the Supreme Court on presidential immunity. A president has to have immunity. If, it, if you don't have immunity, you just have a ceremonial president. Trump's lawyers argued that a former president has immunity from prosecution when it comes to official acts during his tenure in office. Without presidential immunity from criminal prosecution, there can be no presidency as we know it. Some justices seem skeptical of that argument. If the president decides that his rival is a corrupt person 
and he orders the military or orders someone to assassinate him, is that within his official acts that for which he can get immunity? It would depend on the hypothetical. In filings, the special counsel argues that instead of an official act, Trump was working to carry out a, quote, private scheme to remain in power by fraud. Such presidential immunity has no foundation in the Constitution. The Supreme Court's decision will determine whether special counsel Jack Smith can try Trump for his alleged efforts to interfere with the 2020 election. Two lower courts have already rejected Trump's claims of immunity, but legal experts say it's possible the Supreme Court will look for a middle ground. They may not go the full distance that Trump is requesting, but they might be willing to recognize a more limited form of criminal immunity. The Supreme Court's decision is expected by July. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the Supreme Court. We're hours away from witnessing the next crop of future NFL stars get called into the league. The NFL draft starts tonight and lingers on through Saturday. In that time, hundreds of prospects are expected to find a new place to call home. Now, while it's an exciting time for football, the love for the game can have its downsides, something one player in particular knows all too well. You may remember when Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest and collapsed during a game last year, sending Hamlin to the hospital for several weeks, where he was even put on a ventilator at one point. That shocking moment met with the support of millions of fans who followed his world to recovery. Now we've seen Hamlin's life return to normal both on and off the field, but he sure hasn't forgotten what happened. His daily routine now consists of making sure his heart is healthy and consistently works to build a community that's aware of the struggles of heart conditions. Make sure you take preventative measures, you know, get screening and, you know, just check up on your health, but also know the, you know, reactive measures. Hamlin is making his face well known in hospitals across the country where he continues to raise awareness about heart conditions. Also early today, many students got the chance to look to the future. Maumelle Charter High School held its first ever career day, allowing students to chat with engineers, bankers, and even of course the THV 11 news team. And we had no choice but to let them step into our shoes to feel what it's like being a TV reporter. Right now we're at the career fair at Maumelle Charter High School. Uh, we've got a bunch of different places around here. Uh, we have THV 11 News. I like to be able to see all my different options and I like to know that there are other things out there if my plans fail that I have things to back up to. Well, awesome job to the Falcons and good luck on your future endeavors. Listen, Nathan, we might we might be out of a job here soon. <laughs> <laughs> they were so good. Yeah, they seem like it. If you did that to me in high school, I would have not said a word. I was the shyest kid. Yes, we had the brightest lights for them. And then once one got to go in, oh, they were all ready to go. So yeah, uh, did we you have tell them about the aspect of social media in this mm -hmm. industry, though? That's a big part. I've been telling them everything, the but you know, they, they have it down. <laughs> they have it down pack. So uh, I also had one young lady tell me she wanted to be possibly a meteorologist. Hey, so she will be at work today. That's Bring her to the right. studio. We'll have her <laughs> fill in. Well, what's going on in the weather? We have a busy day in weather, not only for today, but also over the next several days. But for the rest of your Thursday, the best chance of showers and storms will primarily be in northeast Arkansas. Drier conditions expected for you folks down to the south and southwest. Now on Friday, the best chance of rain will be in west Arkansas. Along with that, the potential of some strong, possibly severe thunderstorms. I'll have your full forecast coming up.